Hi there, my name is Jaron Schneider and I'm the editor of Resource Mag Online. And right now with me, I have the brand new Profoto B2 unit. And we're gonna take a minute to talk about this and we're also gonna take it outside and see how it performs in the real world. So the Profoto B2 is designed to be kind of an event, wedding, off-camera flash option that's going to be stronger than your traditional speed light, but not as powerful as a B1. This is a 250 watt second battery pack. If you plug another head into it, that 250 watt seconds gets cut in half. So it is a maximum of 250 watt seconds between one or two lights. You can control the power to each light independently, and when you plug this thing in, you'll notice that the power level goes all the way up to 10 when there's one light on it, and nine on each when it, there are two lights on it. And that means you're getting about a stop less power on each light. The Profoto B2 is designed to be an off-camera flash option that will accompany a B1 or a D1 system that you've taken on the road, but the, the best thing about this is that it's supposed to move with you. The B1 and D1 are great, but they don't move very well. Even the B1 as a battery option, it doesn't actually transport well, it's very heavy, and it's difficult to get into small places. The B2 is designed to fix that. You put this even on something as small as a flash bracket, and you're set and good to go. The heads themselves weigh very little, and the battery pack is also very light. They have the same look and feel as a B1 or a D1 with the same inset reflector and this little glass diffused cover. What they do have that's different is instead of having a modeling lamp that's say incandescent, they actually have a LED. And this LED is not actually controllable with the power level. It's pretty it's standard no matter what, but it's particularly bright. You could use this for a lot of things, not just as a modeling lamp, which I think is a really cool addition. As you've noticed probably, you control the power of this thing entirely from the pack. The heads don't have any control on them at all. You can take the pack and put it over your shoulder with this included strap, or on the back side, there's actually a place for you to put a belt buckle through. The Profoto B2 is controlled by the same TTL remote or non-TTL remote that works with the B1 system. I turn this on and I have access immediately to the light. It also has the same number of groups and options. Unfortunately, it also doesn't tell you what the battery power actually is when you start to choose to change how much power is on it. You have to remember what you originally set on the pack for that to work. I wanna quickly go over how fast the refresh rate is on this thing. This is at power level 10. It basically has absolutely no refresh time it's ready to go as quickly or even faster than the top of the line speed light. So I'm gonna show you guys what it's like to put two of these in. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. And you can see that there's two power levels on it. This one can go as high as 6.1 when we're at 9.9, .9, but they both level out at nine when they're fully powered up. With two heads going, refresh rate does not change. And this is likely because it had to accommodate high-speed sync as well. You can use high-speed sync with both of these heads simultaneously off of one pack at the highest power level and not really suffer from any waiting. This is actually great if you're shooting events outdoors or you're shooting portraiture or weddings. Events have varying light conditions and these lights are actually fast enough with their refresh rate to accommodate just about any situation you might put them through. So how do they fare in an actual real-world situation? Let's take these outside with my friend Karamender, and he's gonna show you how he used them on, on location in a fog machine and on the Filbert Steps in San Francisco. Uh, this is our bridge. And it's called Fog Bridge. I know. That's a hell of a view. Here we are shooting right outside the Exploratorium. They have this awesome art installation that mimics San Francisco's iconic fog. This thing only comes on for six minutes every two hours while the Exploratorium is open. I wanted the fog to be a bit of a character in the shoot along with San Francisco's skyline. This was a very tricky and difficult shooting situation, if not impossible. The fog is completely unpredictable and will soak up light left and right. Big heavy, slow to recycle equipment is no good here. This is where the B2s excelled. They are lightweight, small, and agile. Much better than the speed lights I currently use and would have been difficult, if not completely frustrating, on a shoot like this. I was shooting at, I think, two thousandths of a second or a thousandth of a second, but 
high speed sink saved my ass because that fog moved fast. And I don't think I could have just gotten like a quick still frame if I was shooting any, like if I had to shoot what? 200 of a second, 125th of a second, something's real slow like that, but. Oh my God, thank goodness for high speed sync. That, that really saved my bacon. So just like last time, um, every good photographer has been to a place where they're about to shoot. Again, I'm not, so I've never been here. But I saw it on the internet and it looked quite exciting. <laughs> The B2s are brilliant and are a good, solid, professional little kit. It feels like having your high-end studio equipment with you in a lightweight package. Most manufacturers, when they have like TTL uh, for flash purposes, when you switch from shooting in, say, aperture priority or program mode, and you go to manual, it zeroes out all your TTL settings for the flash. Whereas these pro photos don't do that, so you can kind of Take a quick meter reading, or well, not meter reading, but you take a quick shot in automatic or program or aperture priority. Switch over to manual, keep settings on the flashes, and then you just tweak as you'd like from there, which is very nice. I like that, I do that. I love that you can swap the batteries. These guys at Profoto have really thought things through. Their new, smaller, light shaping modifiers are fantastic and built really well to last. I definitely give the Profoto B2s the Caraminder seal of approval if it existed which it should by the way can someone please make that happen it's got it's got just a wee too much power uh, i kind of really wanted to shoot, shoot really shallow but that's okay um i was being a bit of a douche i was shooting 1.4 with flash i do that quite a lot sometimes and and for me i'm just used to like metering manual doing everything like that and this this is a different way to think about it. it's a different way of, different kind of philosophy um, it's different, it's good, it's faster than what I would have done. Um, but I enjoyed it, which is, I think that's the point, right? Like, I got the shot, which is what you want to do. I like that. I also took these out with a friend of mine, his name is Mike Kelly, and we tried them at an architecture shoot. And these things were really great because they have the ability to be handheld very quickly and easily and we were able to fit into small situations like bathrooms that don't necessarily have the amount of room for a B1 or a D1. We also took them outside and used his light painting technique, which requires moving around with the light while firing it from a cam ranger. He usually uses a B1 for that, but we, to this time we chose the B2, and the B2 was a lot lighter, faster, and easier. So if you're going to pick one of these up, it's going to be to sacrifice a little bit of power for a lot more mobility. So what's the final verdict? The B2 is a great event and wedding photographer's lighting tool excelling at exactly what it is built to accommodate. Though it's probably the least powerful strobe Profoto has ever produced, it's not particularly fair to judge that aspect of the product too harshly. 250 watt seconds is considerably better than any speed light on the market, the go-to product of the wedding and event industry. The B2 isn't a studio strobe, and it's not meant to be. In the situations where the B2 is best suited, it's hard to find a better option in terms of power, reliability, size, and weight. Where we think the B2 falters slightly is in its price point. It's more expensive than its big brother, the B1, at $2,195 for one battery and one head. But photographers with a thriving wedding business likely won't dwell on that too long when they see the options that open up to them with the B2. For the full written review of the B2, make sure to head on over to Resource Mag Online. And for more reviews, commentary, and information about the photo and video world, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel.